With that, uh, if you'd like to take your seats, I'd like to invite our guest uh, for our business dialogue to the stage. Mr. James Wong is Chief Executive, Chief, Chief CIO of uh, HNA Group International. If you'd like to come to the stage, thank you. So we've heard a lot about the global brand and China and corporates. Well, H&A Group is a magnificent, a magnificent example of a Chinese company that's grown by leaps and bounds over the past few years. H&A has become a stellar example of a Chinese company going global. The firm started as an airline and is now a conglomerate with more than $100 billion in assets around the world, including ownership of a 25% stake in Hilton Worldwide and a very public um, stake in Deutsche Bank. That's just to name a few. Uh, we're really pleased today joining us is James Wong. He's Chief Investment Officer at H&A Group. He is also the CEO of H&A International and co-chairman of H&A Holdings. Mr. Wong joined H&A in 2007, shortly after graduating from the Central University of Finance and Economics. He has spent more than a decade um, in the fields of leasing, logistics, and transportation corporate governance and investment. He's worked in Beijing and in Singapore, and I'm really happy to say he's now based here in Hong Kong. Mr. Wong, welcome. Thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, I think a lot of people are really happy to hear more about the H&A Group. So if I can just start with a really honest question. I met you for the first time earlier this week and I thought, wow, he's young to be at, s at the head of such a big company. Can you tell us a little bit about your journey in H&A Group? Uh, th thank you, Tara, for the invitation. It's uh, really my honor to be here. Uh, I don't know, I'm so welcomed by the audience today. <laughs> Uh, also exchanged some cards with, with some uh, new friends. Uh, I joined a train group in 2007, and uh, the first job for me is aircraft leasing. So at that time, I, I, I guess in mainland China, few people know what is leasing is. You know that in Chinese character, uh, leasing means zu lin. So when we go out for dinner with our partners, so we uh, the restaurant will issue the invoice, and the invoice in Chinese, zu lin, is very similar to another word, uh, lin, is very similar to, to ping. So sometimes the, 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 the restaurant will issue the invoice of zu ping, you xian gong si. So at that time, few people know about leasing, and few people know about H&A. And I, I joined group in 2007, then working in uh, Beijing for, uh, for e uh, three, four years, and then joined uh, the other joint venture between h and and our partner uh, in uh, Singapore for a shipping uh, company. And in 2011, after the acquisition of uh, GE Seco, uh, I used to be a subsidiary of uh, GE Capital, and then I moved uh, to that company as the uh, assistant to president. Uh, basically uh, on the commercial side. And then uh, three years ago, I joined H International, uh, covers the uh, uh, financing part. I used to be the deputy CFO of uh, the group, uh, managing the overseas cash pool. And then uh, about 10 months ago, I was promoted as the CIO of uh, the group. That's basically my, my journey. All my career after graduation is in h and Group. Wow. So is your journey typical of other senior executives in H&A Group, full career with the same company and a very fast and furious journey within? Yeah, when you look at the uh, senior executive of H&A Group, uh, I have a colleague who is even younger than me, the previous uh, CEO of H&A Group, the chief uh, operating officer. He's now in charge of the modern logistic business. He was born in uh, 1986, so it's only s so 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 he he was the CEO before he uh, he was uh, 30 years old, so it is the 
the H and A culture that the young guys can be promoted uh, very quickly. But don't get me wrong, that we have no uh, special background. That all the promotion basically depends on performance. Wang, do people tend to think you're related to the CEO of the company, and is that the case? Uh, sorry. Because of your yeah. name, people yeah, tend yeah. to think you're related to the CEO of the company. Is is that the case? Yeah, I, I'm asked that I, I'm asked this question uh, many times by different people. Uh, so, for example, our chairman <laughs> has the, the 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 same surname with me, but he is the talent scout for most of our. Uh, I mean, the uh, senior executive uh, of the group. Uh, I'm not a talent, but he's really someone can find your pot uh, potential and can put the red people on in, in the red position. Yeah. So thinking through uh, what people perceive uh, as the culture of H&A, people tend to think of it as a company that's out to buy. Acquisitions, there's been so many of them. What is the strategy now in terms of M&A after all the acquisitions that you've been making? Uh, that is a very good question. Maybe I can spend several minutes introduce h and Group uh, from 24 years ago. Uh, in the last 24 years, I think h and Group did three things. Uh, the first is specialization. We used 24 years. We managed to build up a group of airlines. So far, we have uh, almost 30 airlines globally. Uh, most of them based in uh, China. We also invest overseas uh, in Hong Kong, in uh, uh, France, uh, in, in Brazil, in uh, Australia. Uh, we have not joined any uh, alliance, uh, airlines alliance, but now we almost have the global network to provide basically one-stop uh, services to our uh, clients. And in terms of uh, the safety, so Hainan Airlines, it is the safest airlines in China, ranked the third in the world. And when you, when you look at the services, it's fantastic. It's one of the seven five uh, uh, star uh, uh, services uh, in the world. And the financial side is also doing very well. The uh, LTV, I mean, the debt ratio is, is quite manageable. So it's one of the lowest in, in, in compared to other peers in China. And uh, along this uh, business slide, the second thing we, we did uh, basically is the uh, diversification. That happened about 12 years ago uh, after SaaS happened. Uh, so airlines business is a very good business with very stable cash flow, with good reputation. Uh, but there's, there's uh, quite volatility in this industry. And you, can, you, can, you can now I mean, expect what will happen in the next uh, three months. So, so it's it's very hard to to to, to manage the the prof profitability. But at the same time, when you look at the other, uh, I mean, the business along this business line, like hotel business, like the airport business, like the uh, uh, ground handling services, like the catering uh, business, they are doing very well. They make a lot of money from airlines and even the uh, aircraft leasing. So the the, the first financial uh, uh, business a train group entered into basically is the aircraft leasing business. So that is the, the rationale behind on why we uh, invest uh, such business along this business line. We try to diversify our, diversify our business to protect at the same time to provide the best uh, services to our uh, Clients, and the, the 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 third step basically the uh, globalization. It happened uh, almost uh, uh, seven uh, eight years ago, uh, but actually the first investment uh, for the group overseas in Hong Kong, uh, and also in two thousand nine and ten uh, we 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 acquired the uh, Alco uh, aircraft uh, leasing arm from the uh, Alco Group in Australia, and that also the first. Uh, uh, acquisition with with no, I mean, uh, which is not not a bit the, the airlines business, but but the, the other supporting business. Maybe you can give some numbers of where H and A today. So 
uh, the travelers uh, uh, traveling uh, Virginia uh, invested airlines every year is more than uh, 100 million uh, people. Uh, the uh, total fleet for, for the group, so we have 500, more than 500 aircraft in the aviation sector. We have the other 500 in the aircraft leasing sector and uh, uh, Avalon, uh, which is the third largest uh, uh, aircraft leasing company in the world. And at the same time, uh, 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 I mean, people uh, staying in our hotels, including Hilton, Carlson, NH Hotel, and uh, other uh, H&A hotels in China, is also more than 100 million uh, every year. Uh, uh, when you travel, you, you uh, basically the Swissport Gate Group, they also provide the services. So Swissport is the largest uh, uh, ground handling services in airport globally, and they basically provide about uh, 250 uh, 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 to services, 250 million people every year. And also the catering business, they provide uh, three, about 300 million uh, meals every year. Of course, some, some, some friends can complain uh, to me that the, the meal uh, on, on board is not fantastic, not tasty. But actually, the truth is actually your, your taste bud cannot tell what is good or what is, what is not, uh, I mean, uh, 30,000 uh, feet above the ground. So notwithstanding complaining about meals on the airlines, um, I get it. H&A is big and getting bigger. Um, as that's happening, especially in terms of the media and people now putting a bigger spotlight on your company, a lot of people are questioning the ownership structure of HNA. Do you think you're being unfairly targeted in that sense? And could you put a light on what the ownership structure is at HNA Group? Well, in HNA, we do not have a culture to complain. We have a culture to uh, make things happen. Uh, well, in, in China, and even in the Western world, if you are a private company, basically you, you do not need to disclose who is your uh, shareholder. But since H Group is uh, already a global conglomerate, so our partners, our investors, they are curious about who is controlling this group. Uh, that's why uh, uh, in uh, July, end of July, uh, the group uh, issued an open letter uh, after we uh, had the semi-annual briefing uh, in Europe uh, about who are the ultimate shareholder <coughs> excuse me, uh, of the group. So basically there are two groups uh, of uh, shareholders. One is there are 12 uh, uh, individuals. They are either the uh, founders of the group or the directors of the group. So they are holding about 40 8 percent uh, of shares uh, of the group. So it's, this information is public uh, available. You can Google it now. And the other uh, groups are basically two uh, charity foundation. One is in, uh, based in China. The other is based in, in New York. And the reason why HNA group is, is try to be transparent to everyone is basically we have nothing to hide. And at this stage, we think the transparency is the is best information to deliver to our clients, to our investors, and even to the media, that we are transparent, we are happy to, uh, I mean, make us transparent, even more transparent in the future. And in the open letter, we also uh, uh, committed that if there are any changes uh, to the shareholder structure, we'll try to I mean, this goal is on a regular basis. So do you think it's just been a misunderstanding in understanding the ownership structure? And are you going to try to be more transparent about it, reporting regularly in it in the future? Yes, that's that will de definitely uh, going to happen. Uh, uh, but but I, I, I don't foresee any changes in the very near future, since it's very stable. Uh, uh, ownership structure. At the same time, the other, uh, I mean, the 12 uh, individual shareholder, they also commit 
that the latest is when they pass away, they will donate all their shares into the Sihan Charity Foundations. Um, moving on to the culture of the company, um, a lot has been discussed as well about the Buddhist culture within H&A. And that's something that, that seems quite unusual uh, in terms of Chinese conglomerates. Can you explain how that fits into your corporate culture as we get to know your company a bit better? Yeah, uh, Buddhism culture is actually a traditional Chinese culture. Buddhism is borrowed from India, but you can now find Buddhism in India now. You can only find it in China, in Southeast Asia. Uh, so H H&M Group is a very uh, interesting uh, uh, group that basically try to integrate the Chinese culture with the best West, uh, Western practice. So on the culture side, so it is a Chinese traditional culture to basically, uh, I mean, to, 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 to uh, let people to get together for the same goal. For, for, for instance, in, in HNA, we have a philosophy called uh, for public, that is recognized by the public, uh, participate by the public, uh, uh, sh uh, I mean shared by the public and true by the public. So in Chinese is da zhong ren tong, da zhong can yu, da zhong fen xiang, da zhong cheng jiu. This concept basically borrowed from the traditional Chinese culture, also from the, from the Buddhism uh, culture. But it doesn't mean that the leaders govern this uh, global con conglomerate only using the, the Buddhism. This is only a Chinese culture to, 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 to make sure that uh, people have the same goal. And at the same time, I just mentioned we have uh, two uh, Cihang Charity Foundation. Uh, the Cihang, uh, actually this name also borrowed from the Chinese traditional culture, from the Buddhism, from the Buddha uh, Guan Yin, that means Sihan means the uh, mercy fairy that uh, can uh, basically uh, is a kind of form to uh, give back to the to the community. But on the other side, uh, about the uh, best uh, Western practice, uh, I think most of you who who are interested in H and A, uh, you are aware that uh, about 20 years ago, Mr. Josh Solos, he already uh, through his fund invest in uh, Hainan Airlines, one of our uh, flagship uh, in the group. So at that, from, from, from the very beginning, h and Group already adopt the, uh, I mean, the, the best Western practice about how to manage his company, uh, how to, I mean, to make sure that you are on the same page with, uh, with the Western uh, investors on the management side, and how, how can you, I mean, uh, determine your 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 strategy directions. Uh, basically, we, we have already done it for almost twenty years, from the very beginning. Um, to conduct outbound investment and to continue to expand overseas, you need the support from banks and financial institutions and. There's been a lot made of that in the media recently as well. How is the relationship so far in terms of finding finance? And are you worried about that going forward? Uh, I think h Group today, we are in the best uh, financial uh, situation. When you look at the uh, leverage ratio, it's one of the lowest in the last uh, 10 years. I used to be the deputy CFO of the group. Uh, I know how the, the CFO and also the CEO team, they are working to uh, lower the uh, leverage ratio when they try to expand uh, their business globally. So one of the reasons uh, we are so confident uh, and comfortable is basically h and Group, we are already a global conglomerate. Uh, to share some numbers with, with you that the overseas assets contribute 40% of the group portfolio. Uh, the revenue accounts for 60% uh, uh, from overseas. And the overseas uh, employees basically they account for uh, 75%. So in terms of revenue, we are a US company. In terms of employees, we are a European company. 
but originally we are from, from China. And today we do not only rely on banks, we also share our profit, share the future of our business with our investors. So we look at uh, the H&A's portfolio today, basically in every uh, business sector, we have the either the regional leading or even the world leading uh, companies, like in the aviation uh, industry, I just mentioned Hainan Airlines, uh, I mean, uh, Gate Group, uh, the largest uh, catering uh, services globally. Uh, like in the uh, financial sector, we have the second, uh, I mean, the third largest uh, aircraft leasing company in the world, the second largest one uh, in container leasing company uh, in, in this industry. So in the hotels business, we are, one, we are top 10 in the world already. So customers like this story. The most important things, they, they buy the idea, H&A Group share with them. So it's also the idea of the founders, the director, uh, board of directors, or the senior management, that we are not working for ourselves. We are not working only for our employees. We are working for the society. We are working for the global community. And then they are happy to share with us. And, and even, even on the banks, we, are, we do not only work with Chinese banks, we work with many Western banks, like JP Morgan, uh, Barclays, UBS, Credit Suisse, DBS, many of them, so, uh, including Deutsche Bank. Yes, we are global partners with each other. You sound very optimistic. Um, and it's been a meteoric rise for H&A, but this morning we've been talking about different headwinds, especially geopolitical, but also um, misunderstandings between East and West. What are your biggest concerns as you look forward towards the next few years in the company? Well, well we are businessmen. Uh, we have nothing to do with uh, politics. Entrepreneurs, businessmen, what we can contribute for the world. For H and A, we have vision. They are working for the peace of the peace of the world. We are working for the happiness of humankind. It seems, uh, it seems that um, most of the companies may not have this vision, but we have this vision. That's why we invest globally in different regions, in different business sectors, especially to provide services. To, to, to our customer. So to define H&A Group, we are a modern service uh, provider uh, in, in basically three different sectors, aviation and, and uh, tourism, modern uh, financial services, and modern uh, logistics business. So we, we try to integrate the uh, market with the best practice from, from the West to put them together, so that people will know each other very well. So in H&A Group, we also have the internal mechanism to introduce the, our employees working in Europe and US to travel to China to know what is China is today. So we also basically uh, send our colleagues to, to, to the US and Europe and Australia for training. So, and also by investment, the reason why, <coughs> sorry, the reason why we invest so many uh, different sectors in in different regions is basically we want we want to people know each other. If I am the shareholder <coughs> of a <coughs> sorry of a European country, that if they have any misunderstanding between each other, we can solve this issue very soon. So we have board meeting every three months. They send us the, the, the monthly pack every month. So we, 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 we keep the, the, ro uh, the ball rolling every day. So the, the, the more we communicate, the less um, misunderstanding happen. Again, very optimistic. Uh, surely there must be some concerns, some, some worries about headwinds or, or the biggest roadblock that you're facing right now. Can you just sort of give us a hint of what your biggest concerns are? Uh, I think uh, we are always uh, uh, very, uh, uh, I mean, uh, positive. Uh, the reason behind is we think China's uh, peaceful rise will continue. 
in the next, uh, 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 I mean, decades. Uh, I think it's very good news that the central government recently uh, issued a new policy uh, on what should uh, the Chinese company invest uh, uh, in overseas. That is very good guideline for the Chinese uh, companies, including HNA. So that is a guideline for us uh, to to basically uh, have a very clear picture on what you can do, what you cannot. So I, I think the the most uncertainty is, is basically there's no direction for you. Once there's direction, you, you, we can find a way to follow up. And for HNA, uh, for example, for the Bell and Road policy, we followed it very closely. And recently, we also invest in uh, the the, uh, the airport in, in Brazil, uh, in Germany, and we also, uh, I mean, uh, launch many flights, about 90 flights, to the Bell and Road countries. So H N Group, we try to follow this policy. We we try to make all the people happy, uh, including uh, the Chinese government, including the local governments in the in the West, and also the the people we we served. A final question for me before I open it up on the, um, from the floor. Going forward now, after this sort of very busy period of acquisitions, are you planning to slow down a bit or actually speed up and, and buy more overseas? Uh, our group CEO, Adam Tan, uh, released the news to the media several months ago. We will slow down a little bit. The reason behind it is actually there's some certainty in the political and economical uh, condition uh, worldwide. But we are still continue to do some acquisition, uh, acquisitions. The reason behind it actually, we can find synergies uh, after such transactions. For example, we have already more than 1,000 uh, aircraft in our portfolio and the group. So it actually creates some uh, value to to the to the group. Once we approach Boeing or Airbus, they are very happy to work with us. They they will try to I mean introduce the the best aircraft to H N A uh, because we are one of the biggest uh, uh, buyer uh, already. And even uh, I think when you travel, uh, you have the headache from the very beginning that you need to book the hotel, to book the car, book the uh, air tickets, you, you need to book the travel agencies. But h &A Group, we try to provide such one-stop business uh, services to our clients. So in the future, we, we, we are targeted to basically use one app to serve you from the very beginning. That is a point-to-point -point services. I'm getting an Amazon feeling. <laughs> um, I'd like to open it up to the floor again. If you could give us your name and affiliation, who would who would like to go first? Over here, Lily. James, uh, Lily Zhang, um, partner at Deloitte APIs. We met in uh, Select USA in Washington D.C. Um, I have two questions. One is, you mentioned a lot of m and activities that h &A has done over the years. Congratulations. Those are all great, but I'd like to hear the lessons learned, the challenges for post-merger m and activities, and what are some of the lessons you've learned that you can share with this group? That's question number one. And number two, being a group this big, you must have a lot of suppliers that are following your footsteps. So what are uh, some of the things that h and are doing for the supplier group? Is there a Qingou? <laughs> the Chinese companies, your suppliers from around the world, it's like anywhere you go, the suppliers also follow? And what are some of the things that you're sharing with the supplier group? Thank you. Uh, this is very good questions. The first one, we, we learned a lot of lessons uh, in the acquisition. So. Uh, People see we acquire company, but people didn't see how we digest it. Uh, for, for instance, uh, I, I used to work in the uh, uh, aircraft leasing sector. 
the first uh, uh, acquisition we made uh, on the, uh, in this sector about Alco. Basically, when we purchased this uh, business, the, the management team already left. This is only a portfolio. <coughs> so for each group, we, we, we try to uh, invite our friends, partners to join this company to manage it. Uh, but actually, it is not a, a very good business model. So the, the, the company didn't grow very fast uh, as our uh, expectation. But several years later, when we think the Avalon uh, uh, team is, is doing fantastic, they basically managed to list this company uh, just several years after the establishment. So we found chemistry with them. So, so that's why HA Group acquired Avalon. But after we acquired Avalon, we found this very interesting uh, topics on how should we merge those two companies together. So once the, the team is very strong, it doesn't mean that we will send the existing management team to the acquiree. But actually, we, it really depends on which team can contribute to the company. And recently, you know that we acquired CIT and put it into the Avalon and the Alco portfolio. At the same time, we keep the Avalon team, but we still, I mean, we had some CIT uh, employees to join us. So this is something that on the management side. And on the other, on the other side is basically the cross-selling and uh, basically the cost saving uh, across a different portfolio. You know that we, the, uh, I just mentioned the aircraft purchase is a very good example. And the other uh, uh, examples also happen in the hotel industry, uh, happen in the uh, uh, airlines industry. So they, they share the, uh, their, their offices uh, they share their uh, lounges between each other. So that is uh, the, the huge cost saving for a train group. Uh, so next, second question is... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah, ecosystem yeah, 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 yeah. of the company. Yeah, yeah sorry. Yeah, that is, this is, uh, we are working with uh, many suppliers uh, uh, like, for, for example, in uh, the uh, acquisition sector, we, we work with uh, advisors, we work with uh, all the firms. So I think this, uh, without the great support, we, we cannot make deal happen. Uh, and in HA Group, uh, we have different investment team, but we centralize the decision. So basically, we have different groups to work with advisors, we have uh, uh, different group working with our suppliers. But actually, we know that is a, a, we, we, we should, uh, I mean, to, 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 make, to, to make sure that the credibility is there, that uh, the suppliers can find potential uh, in the future with us. So we, we have the uh, policies uh, for each business group that how you can work with the advisors but at the same time, they also centralized to make sure that the group has the best relationship with our suppliers. It also happened on the uh, financial sectors that we have the headquarter to headquarter relationship to make sure that we have a plan for the whole year uh, to make sure the supplier, the FAs and all the firms, uh, legal uh, teams are happy with us. We have time for just one more question in the audience over here. Um, thank you. Uh, my name is Jin Ling. I'm with Control Risks. So we manage companies' risks. Yeah, We protect companies' investment. So when you do the acquisition overseas, you tend to see a lot of the opportunities. So I wanted to understand what are the, some of the risks that keeps you awake in the middle of the night? Thank you. Aside from your four-month-old baby. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's true. Uh, when you look at risk, uh, so in my daily work, I, 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 I uh, discuss the potential 
uh, M and A deals with my uh, CIOs. Uh, so basically, uh, the successful rate for the acquisition in our group, I think, is less than five percent. We look at many different potential targets. Uh, if you made a mistake, the result is is very severe. We we learned some lessons. Uh, we, we 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 do not have hundred uh, percent successful rate uh, post acquisition. Uh, there's some failure happened before, and uh, I think if if you Google, you can see that in uh, about five years ago, H and Group uh, some have some uh, negative news uh, on the shipping industry that we enter into. Uh, uh, industry at a wrong cycle point. We think it is already bottom, but when we look down, basically it's a, it's a, a lot of layers behind. We are still at mid-level of the mountain. So that is the lesson we learned. Once we, I think HA Group, we have a very interesting capability from the management team, from the board of director, that once we think this industry has potential, and h and group can create value at, uh, well, uh, in this industry, that h and group will try to expand our business very fast uh, by uh, organic growth, by acquisition. By the way, uh, our organic growth uh, for the first half of this year is, is about 20% for the whole group. That is fantastic uh, growth uh, in this uh, economic uh, condition. Uh, so, uh, from the risk perspective, once we think this uh, industry is basically out of our control, we cannot add any value, cannot find any synergy, we'll try to quit as soon as possible. So shipping is a good example for H&A. And for, for, for the normal uh, acquisition, basically we, there's a, a, a principle for us that only the targets who can provide synergies, who can has very strong cash flow, who do not really depend on the uh, credit of the group, basically it's a self-discipline uh, uh, business. So only for that target can h and &E Group touch. And after the transaction, h and &E Group will do all our best to find synergies. I don't know whether I answered your questions. Thank you very much. I'm afraid we've run out of time, um, but I would like to thank you very much for coming to our conference today, for sharing your time and your vision about H&A Group. Uh, we hope to see you again, and James Wang, thank you very much. Thank you, Terry. Thank you, everyone.